Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome to Learning Live with Darlene. And oh, I've got an echo here, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, welcome, everyone. So here we are, and Darlene's got some awesome stuff to share with you tonight. So I'm literally just going to turn it over to her, and she is going to share with you some awesome papers and some awesome ways to use it because we always fall in love with paper and then you don't know how to use it. So uh, she's got some great tips and tricks for you. The camera is yours, Darlene. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Learning Live for this week. So as our title said for our Learning Live, it's Faux Mixed Media. And if you've been to the store, have you seen online, that we brought in a lot more ink drops paper. These special papers are from Craft, um, sorry, Craft Consortium. There's different colors, different palettes, depending on your mood. So I do have quite a few here, but just to show you what these pa uh, papers are, basically we call them faux mixed media because they have that alcohol ink look to it. So I'm just gonna show you briefly, quickly, what these papers look like. So they have that feel of mixed media without the dirty part, which is my thing, it's Sherry's thing. If you don't like to get messy, but you love the look of all this nice mixed media, alcohol ink, the faux it's perfect for what I will show you tonight. So this is called Ocean. Um, monochrome, uh, monochrome is one of our um, popular ones in the center, uh, center uh, in our store, I mean. It has the blacks and gray tones with a hint of gold. So just to flip through it quickly, but look how gorgeous it is. If you love alcohol inks and you know, so this does take into that, but it also reminds me of marble. So here's that. We have rose. Of course, rose is one of my favorites because it has the purple hues in it. So they make different kinds of paper pads. So here are a few. Um, tonight's projects, I do use variety from each pack just to show you what they look like in my projects. Two of the new ones that we brought in recently is Dust. Dust have, has the pastel look to some of the pages, but they're gorgeous. So I am flipping through these quickly, but hopefully when I start my projects, you will have a closer look. So that is our newest one. That's my favorite. I've used that a couple times. Um, this is a little bit different. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. How many of each paper do you get in the pads? Uh, I believe it's four. Hold on. Let me check. Yes, it's four sheets, but there's plenty. So in a package, you get 20 designs. I'm thinking 20 designs, 40 double-sided sheets. So That's a lot of paper. To it play. is a lot of paper. So it's four of each pattern, but that's a nice one so this one's a little bit different it doesn't have like the shimmer of the gold or silvers but it has that retro look and i'll show you a card that i made with that but here these are the latest ones that we just got into the store so these are the six by six pads i love using six by six just because as a card maker or traveler's notebook it's per perfect um sizing but we did bring in some of the 12 by 12 so of course we have retro summer which is the one I just showed you in a bigger version. And this is Dust, which is also 12 by 12. The same prints, just in a larger scale. So just to show you that, bigger surface. The one that was out of stock when we were ordering some more pads is the Sunset one. My favorite one, unfortunately, we just have the 12 by 12. But I have so much goodies to show you with this. So this is Sunset. I just love those orange and yellow hues in it. So those are the paper packs, but let's start off by showing you some things. So one of the things, one second, gotta put it aside. One of the things I like to do with these type of paper pads is just doing, using them as background. So here are some that just uses background. Straightforward, but I will show you other techniques. So here I did was cut it into an A2 size card took my dies out and I just made a wedding card. So very simple, straightforward, just cutting panels, adding some dies on it, a sentiment, and that's ready to go on a card base. Another example that I talked about earlier 
with that retro summer. I pictured it as a sunset with some water. So I put some lawn fawn and some um, foil sentiments and there's another card ready. So this is just straight up using that paper pad. So those are straight up, but let's take it up a notch using it as dies. So here I have some that I'll do with you and some that I've already done. So here is a butterfly set from Simon Hurley and I was playing around trying to see what works and here, so as you can see in this paper, um, this card, I use it as a background, but now I'm using it as a die cut background. I'm trying to focus here. So I cut out, the butterflies have two pieces. It has the shadow as well as the detail. I did my detailed in black and then I cut the solid part in the, um, let's say the papers, the ink drop papers. Here is an example. I uh, used 49 Market as my card base. I did some rub-ons and stamping, but just easy and simple. Just to show you a different take with the reverse. So this one here, I use the ink drop paper as the solid part. Here, I die cut it as the intricate part. So some of the easy ways to use these paper in, an, in other ways. So let's do some crafting and you can see more of what I like to do. So we, well, I know I have a lot of dies that are either intricate with holes like this. So I call it, well, this is like a stained glass window. Or if you have dies that are cover plates, like these two here, just to show you some other things that you can do. So I cut the intricate part in black, but using that retro paper, it does make it look like a stained glass. So this is like a little arch card. And then using cover plate, oh, so I picked another retro background. I cut out my um, cover plate. So just even a subtle look in the background, but it has that pop of color and you just add a sentiment and you're ready to go. So those are easy ways to mass produce cards by using those ink drop paper. So here's one that I already glued. It is very hard to choose. That's why I have quite a few there. I would start off if you needed to pick one or two, start off with your favorite color palette or a palette that you like to use. I know a few ladies that came into store they told me they like the ocean, but I know ocean we were running low, which is this one here for like water scenes or, you know, sky scenes like backdrops. So I would suggest going with either your favorite color or a color that you would use to make your cards. So here are just quick and easy ways to make some nice, simple cards ready to go. So who is ready to see something else? Let's do some die cutting. I did prepare some dies, some, well, some ink drop papers. Let's die cut some flowers. So one of the ways I like to do it is that you can pick, I kind of use this as my sample. So I pick three different shades of color to use, but I, I have samples where if you use the same color, what it would look like. Why can I open this package? So let me do some quick die cutting just to show you how I pick and strategically pick my papers to work with it. So I need to, taking this as my inspiration, I need three different colors depending on which one. So I want my light pink as a top so I know that is the middle part. I, would, I am going, going to use my purple as my base. So that is my biggest. And then I love the teal in the mix of those two. So I'm picking the second layer. And because of the different um, colors and the patterns, I basically choose what I want to see. I, so you can either put it here if you like the dark or if you want the dark and the light, put it here. So the nice thing is that you can still customize it to the colors that you want. So let's pick this end. 
I am going to apologize for the shaking. You might get some shakes there from the die cutting. I want to show you that you can use these kind of paper instead of using solid colors. So then that way you get that nice pattern that, you know, instead of a solid, let's say purple flower, you get the different shades and it looks more realistic. So here I'm going to do, oh, that was for one of my projects. And so here, and now I need a little bit of pink. So I'm going to say, because the green is a little bit darker, I might just go for a lighter pink shade. So I'm just going to put it right over there and die cut. So this is the In Bloom flower. So there you go. And I have lots of paper left over and let's glue this quickly. I do have my comments on. I know Sherry's there if there's any questions. But all I'm going to do, and you could pop them up, but I'm just doing it flat. See how pretty those colors are? Just mixing and matching. There is some um, center pieces, but just so you could see. I need to get more magnets for this, but quickly put it here. I don't want to lose anything. So for those center pieces, I did already pre-cut them because they're very, very tiny. I'll show you how quick. There is my center. So I did my little center in gold just for that pop of color. I did a the smaller flower already, already done as well, just to show you those two. And now where is... So, oh, I placed it down. Now I can't find it <laughs> with this mess. But anyways, so, oh, there it is. Here's the center uh, little dots here. Thing. Sorry, I'm gonna get my tweezers out. The little ones are very finicky. So here are two flowers, and this is what you can do with it. So yeah. Here what I did was same two flowers. So those are the ones we just did. I added the green leaves that came with it. I put it on the emboss. Um, I used an embossing folder for the background. And there is one quick card done. To take it up a notch, to bring in more of that ink drop paper, I used it as my back layer. And then I added the embossing folder and then I added the flowers. So with the ink drops, your flowers are always going to look different because of the way the, the patterns are made. But I love how you can change them up. So as I said, um, for this one, it's more of the tone on tone. I used one of the six by six and I did all three layers on that six by six. So the colors are more matchy matchy. Whereas all the other flowers, I did it on different kinds of ink drop paper just to show you the variations of color. So here are two. I already had one backing ready to glue these cards, but just wanted to show you how simple and fast you can whip these up by those papers. So I do have leaves cut out, but I will. So I have some leaves, depending on how many leaves you want. You can for sure ink them with um, distress inks or colored inks to make them, to darken them up a little bit. But I'm just going to add one flower, one, sorry, not one flower, one petal there, another petal here. Because I only put glue right in the center of the flowers, I can just stick this one in. 
and stick that one underneath. I just need to make sure the glue is dry. And what I like about putting it on the embossed background, it just puts a little bit more texture to your card. So here, these leaves are also die cut on green ink drop paper. That way you get the different shades of green depending on what colors you're using. But I'll just put a few here and I'll finish the rest after. But just to give you an idea that all these flowers, including the leaves and um, leaves, are ink drop. So just to show you that. So the next thing we can do, let me show you something else. I had to put them in little cases so then easier for tidy up purposes. So next thing, so that was one. So same idea, I showed this one to Matt and he was like, wow. So using, let me show you the die set. So this is Hero Arts is um, Daffodil and Lawn Fawn has their version too. But what I thought about this is that it makes these pretty flowers. So same thing, I use that sunset paper. I try to be organized, but it was the only way that I knew that I could cover everything I wanted to do tonight and show you because there's so many ideas. And one of them I couldn't finish because I, I, I just came up with it as I was going live. So taking these dies, and I would do the same thing. So let's just do one of the petals for now. And daffodils are usually orangey yellow. So I, both sides, there's different sides. I just randomly pick and I die cut it. So let me show you this one. I have to say this was one of my favorite ones. I think it's the paper, that whole... As I told Matt, it's delicious, but that, and let's pick a lighter yellow so we get the different shades, actually. So this was a 12 by 12, I had to cut smaller so it would fit in my die cut machine. So I'm just picking random spots for the yellow, oops. And I think you would agree that this turned out really nice. So I do have two samples already done, but I want to show you how quick and simple. So here is, and then, whoops, that moved. And then I just need that center. Of the daffodil. And for this one, I picked like a darker orange, so it pops off that yellow. And then you can always take your white gel pen to put some nice details on it. And you just have to pop, whoops, pop this up in the middle. And that was it. So here is a daffodil that I use with this set. So with these cards, I just want to show you how easy it is just to pull out your dies and use these as background. So here are two cards. Here is the daffodil, same thing. I use a light green ink draw paper for the leaves. As you can tell, I've been into foiling. So majority of all my sentiments tonight is Foiled with the hot foil machine but here are but look at all that detail from that ink drop that you see in those petals and to take it up a notch so this one here white cardstock I ink blend a little bit of blue so that yellow pops taking up a notch I embossed my background so that is my next technique but look how that yellow pops from that ocean ink pad, um, ink drop paper. So another cool one. So that is one other way that you can do it. So now I showed you how to use ink drop paper as um, with dies uh, with cover plates. And then 
now and you saw a little bit of the embossing folders and I have a few techniques with embossing folders. So my favorite thing is embossing folders. So I have tons of them. And one thing I would do is grab. Okay, so let's start off before I continue. So here I'm going to give you a choice of which Let's pick two designs and you guys can pick which one. So let's do this one here. So here's a gray one and I'm going to pick something in the opposite color. And I will take a vote on which one you want to see. Okay, I'm trying to pick something that I haven't used too much of. So you want gray or do you want pink and purple? I will take the one with the most. So I'm leaving a choice which you want to see being used with an embossing folder. So the embossing folder, where, while I am waiting for that, I'm just going to take one. And see, oh, I see some pinks and purples. Okay, so pinks and purples. Perfect choice. So I am using Spellbinders 3D embossing folder. This is called Leafy. I've used that quite a few tonight. I am going to cut down my six by six paper to an A2 size. If you're making a bigger size card or a TN page or in your scrapbook, feel free to just, um, does it fit? No. This is not wide enough, but it should work. What size is this? That's a good question. Five and three quarters. So you could cut up to five and three quarters. So let's do this at four and a quarter. I'm just doing everything A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And that way I can just plop them on cards. And the nice thing is that if you're on a roll and you're making lots of these cards, you can leave out the sentiments just like when you're doing any other cards and pop a sentiment on it when the occasion or event comes up. So what I like to do with an embossing folder is that I don't usually put it at the edges. I put in the middle that way, just something that I usually do. I just put in the middle closer to the top and I run it through your machine. So every machine's different. So just, um, look up your instructions on how to do your sandwiches with a big shot i use my adapter oops sorry the platform and i need only one cutting pad whoops to run it through so just make sure that you look at your instructions before you put it in because the worst thing is to jam this all inside but I don't know if that will focus. Uh, will it focus? Can you see? It looks good. There. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. So I love that texture that you can put with the embossing folder, or you can use the other side, the deboss side. But you know what? Since I have this all out, let's show you the gray one, just so you can see. As um, Sherry said, it could be a great masculine card or a wedding card. I'm loving this gray and gold for weddings, anniversaries, or as you saw, the um, one with the bride is a, um, a bridal shower card. So here I'm doing the same thing in the middle. Oh, let me change up my embossing folder so you can see different ones. This one, I can't remember. I think this is called Tuft. I will find the casing. Can't find it. Oh, right here. Which one's this one? This one reminds me of like a pillow. Oops, what's this one? Tuft. So it has these markings on it. But let's see. So once again, it's going to shake. Sorry. Okay. 
and back. And it's a great way to use use your embossing folders if you haven't used it in a while. But can you see that one there? But look at all that pattern. So here are the two different ones that I've done. So you can use these as your backgrounds, you can use them on top and put a sentiment, or you can use the backside. Okay, so here are two with the embossing folder. That where? Now it's just trying. So another technique you can do with an embossing folder, I am going to, to tell I have a lot of embossing folders. So here is a technique where we're going to slice the card. And what I mean by that is that we're going, going to do one in white or any solid color, but white's just easier to see. And we're going to pick one ink drop paper. So let's do, I like the smoky look to it. So once again, my white is already at an A2 size. This one I am going to cut down and we're going to do a slice technique. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have ink drop papers at home? So here I'm using leafy again because it's the easiest to demonstrate this. So with slice, what you want to do is take your pattern paper and um, I align it right to where, I'm not sure if you can see, where the top of the embossed part starts and the side where the emboss. It's the easiest to line up. Another way you can do this is putting washi tape down the side so that way when you're pattern paper and your solid paper are embossed in the same spot. But this is the easiest way to do it. So I have it lined up right where that, where the pattern stops. I will put it through the machine. Ooh, this embossing folder is a hard one to put through. And you go right through the whole entire paper. So here is that. And now I need to do the same thing for my solid. So once again, lining it right where the top of the emboss starts and the side where it starts, and then running that through. So here, oh, sorry for all the shaking. Okay. So here, look at look. So I have two identical pieces, one in pattern and one in solid. So my favorite technique with this is the diagonal cut. So whatever you cut on this one, you have to do the identical on that one. So for the diagonal cut, I am just moving it to the left. So my right top is it where my cutter um where my blade well is and then lining up the left bottom here if you're doing this technique start your cut through the middle and not your edges so it doesn't break so i'm just slicing the diagonal cut like that now i'm doing this exact same thing with my pattern paper so i didn't move it when i took it out i know that was the top that's the bottom. So exact same thing. And what I did for my card is just we're swapping it out. So taking it makes it gives you two cards. I took a solid just to make it easier and my glue is hiding hopefully you didn't clog it but i'm just going to do this quickly so yes it's white and white you could emboss this one but i like how it just gave it a sturdier base if 
by doing it this way and then gluing the bottom. So when you do this technique, your pattern from your embossing folder should match up as if they were one piece of paper. So I bring that up. Don't know if you can see that, but if you look at where the seam is, that leaf continues to the pattern. So by lining it up the same way for both sheets, you will get like a seamless line. Like you would think it's one piece of paper because the pattern just runs all the way through. So this is the diagonal and it gives you two cards because now you have this one to work with. But here are some other examples of, oh, I did have other examples. So here is using, here's another diagonal. Very simple, but it's a great like hello card, just a note, miss you. This was from the black and gray gold. But can look at how just putting those together could be like part of your layout. And I have a layout that I use some ink drops to show you at the end, but here is the diagonal. And here is one where I did it, I didn't do it evenly. I purposely did it so one side is bigger than the other, but here is just a vertical cut. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's all. Like the embossing folder gives it so much detail already that you don't need anything else. Like, I think this is my favorite paper here, but it looks like the world because of like the greens and the teals and the greens and the blues and the gold. And if you want to take it up a notch and you want this to be more visible, if you have a sanding block, um, I found it work with, um, if you have a mono um, erase, sand eraser, it worked well. Let me see if I can show you. If you lightly um, went over the top of the emboss, you get that white showing through. So if you want to take it up a notch, and you want the pattern to show a little bit more, you take a sand er um, eraser, a sanding block, and just run through. And you could do the same thing because that would go on one side of the card. Let me just see, yeah. And it just has that pop. So that's another way that you can do that. So you could see I've been playing with the embossing folder, it's so much fun. So that is called the swap. The slice and swap Ooh, yes with gild um the gilding wax on top Ooh, i should try that that would be fun Ooh, the idea is like once i started that was it i just wanted to show you all the things so what i think i have one more and this is a fun one let's see where is it nope that one I had it and then Matt wonders why I need more pins for my glue because I can never find it okay so the last technique I have I need to clean up some space here is where did I put it okay see you guys said I was organized now I'm like lost okay so with this technique I need a couple strips to back it and what we're going to do is slice some paper so once again what I did was I took a six by six pad I wanted to try this blue because of that it's so pretty I cut it at three quarters of an inch three quarter of an inch yes doesn't matter how wide or how thin you want them and I keep them. You could stagger them and change them up, but I kept them in order and I'll show you why. And you can at least get two or three cards here, but let's just do those three. And I embossed a background already, just so you don't have to watch that. So this one is the tuft and I need strips. So because these are a little bit lighter in weight i did back them up with just white cardstock to the same size three quarters of an inch 
and I'm going to just place these on top of that just to give it some rigid uh some you know a little bit more layer so it's not as rigid as it is especially because it's going on that embossing folder where it's very bumpy those embossed parts you want to make sure that it doesn't pop up but so here i am keeping that same pattern really you don't have to because it's pretty cool in itself So just lining these up. Sorry, I did that off screen, but I just backed them. And yes, there is some showing. So here is keeping it in the same pattern as I cut it, but you could switch it around because really it wouldn't matter. So here I am, switched it around and I'm going to glue these down diagonal. They are bigger than the card, which I've done purposely. So I know I have enough and I'll cut off the extra. And I just put it wherever you want it. I like the look of a diagonal, but you could for sure put them horizontal or vertical. It just added a little bit of color to the card base. So I left a little bit of a gap. Because it's bumpy, you wanna make sure it's stuck on pretty well. And this one here as well. So just holding that down, making sure it's stuck down. And then I'm going to take my scissors and snip all that extra that's sticking out. You could measure it to the T, but I found that this was just easier. So that way I knew that I had the right length. I wasn't too short because I didn't know how to cut properly. But, oops, that flew. But look at that. Just that texture of color, and then you could put a sentiment. So here's the one we just did. And any sentiment, or you could put a shaped um, shape and then a sentiment. What do I have here? Just so I took out my pink fresh. Um, but just to give you like even something like that. Just putting a sentiment, you could put it right on top, you could put it up at the, uh, you know, anywhere, but just like that. So here is the one we just did. Let me show you some other patterns, changing up your embossing folder. Told you I really like that one there. I love that rainbow look. So here, and so this one, I kept the paper in the same orientation. So if you look at it closely, it uh, flows. This one, I mixed and matched, but you can't tell. Here is another one. So this one here, Cherry and I have been saying this should be an um, learning live is using the, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah, yo, yo. Um, the emboss and transfer. So I took that cover plate I showed you earlier. I used it as an embossing folder. So if you have cover plates and you want to get more use out of it, the emboss and transfer um, Sizzix set that looks like that helps you convert all your dies, your cover plates. So instead of cutting through the paper, it embosses it. So it's a great set, but this is what I did. I took that cover plate. I made it as an embossed background so it didn't punch any holes. And I did the same thing. So here I just changed the direction. I put it higher instead of lower. But all you have to do is you can add a sentiment. This one I might put at the bottom. And there you go. So those are some techniques. But I want to show you that it's not limited to card making. And yes, tonight I showed you a lot regarding cards because it's just easier to show you on screen how easy it is. But... For my Traveler's Notebook friends, this one is for you. So those butterflies that you see there are ink drops. I did it as rainbow. So this one is a Traveler's Notebook. And of course, I did rub-ons and some smushing and stamping. But there's my Traveler's Notebook page using ink drops. And... 
sorry, I had to, I, I know a lot of us is two page layouts, but I, I did only one. But here is one. So I'm covering everyone tonight, card makers, TNs, scrapbook. Here you go. These ones are all for you. Um, so these are ink drops again. So all the different paper pads I had with the butterflies, added those, and then you, we can use them as matting. So yes, they're here, but you won't see a lot of it if you're putting a mat. Do I even have a mat done? No, this is too big. I don't have a mat, but just to show you that we, if you had a paper mat, you could just have some of that ink drop paper showing but why not use it as a paper mat but there you go so that is my layout and that is it my friends i hope you enjoyed tonight and learned different techniques that you can do with this faux mixed media paper that doesn't cost you know doesn't require us all the mess but lots of lovely paper different ways we can use it. And there's tons of ways, but these are my favorite ones. Well, I would say my go-tos. And you can just mass produce. And I know I have, oh, I, have, I like this one, the daffodils. So that brings me to the end of tonight. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Darlene. Those were amazing ideas. Oh, and a lot of the, those, um, those, uh, what did you call them? Slice and swap. Yes. <laughs> you could, you could do that on a layout as well. Yes. You know, you could do large pieces that, uh, that cross the two pages and use them on a layout or those diagonal stripes as well. Mm -hmm. So, well, thank you everyone for tuning in tonight for another learning live. Uh, just a reminder, there is no what's new tomorrow. But you never know when we may pop in unannounced and by surprise. So keep your eye on Facebook. You never know what will happen when it's just Darlene and Sherry at the store. Uh, beyond that, a uh, long weekend is coming up. And then we will be back with another Learning Live next week. Is it me? Um, I think so. <laughs> I think it's me. So you know what? We'll just have some fun. Have a good night, everyone. Have a wonderful long weekend, and we will talk to you all very soon. And don't forget to grab at least one of those ink drop papers because I believe they're going to go quickly. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.